Discovery Land is one of the five original lands that opened with the Euro Disneyland Park back in 1992. As with everything when it comes to the design of attractions, or in this case, a full park, there were many stages of development and many ideas that changed as time evolved. Some months ago, I made a video about the Discovery Land that never was. This was one of the first versions of the land and would see the creation of a much bigger and impressive themed area, complete with several attractions, and even something that would be used years later for the development of Tokyo Disney Sea, the mysterious island. At the end of said video, I said this. Many of the ideas went to find their way into the current park, other parks, and even other versions of Discovery Land. Versions that were as amazing and exciting as this, versions I will explore in the next video. Oh boy! Before we begin, if you enjoy my content and this video, make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing as I upload weekly videos on theme parks from the past to the future. If you want to go the extra mile, consider becoming a channel member. You can find me over at Twitter, Instagram, Blue Sky, and in our Discord community where I'm most active. Links are in the description. That said, let's dig in. Discovery Land was based off an idea by Tony Baxter called Discovery Bay, a place in the past where great visionaries came together and developed new ways of life, transportation, and exploration. It was the future of the past. When the idea was deemed too big, it sat dormant for years, until Baxter saw himself at the helm of the Euro Disneyland project. Here, he had the opportunity to bring some of his ideas back to the table, and that's exactly what happened. For the development of the park, a creative director was given to each of the lands. For a Tomorrowland Type 1, this person was Tim Delaney. The blue sky face of an Imagineering project is when Imagineers bring up everything and expand it as there's nothing but blue sky above them. This was when the land we explored in the past video was developed. Everything was big, exciting and immersive. Unfortunately, most blue sky concepts don't see the light of day due to many reasons, with a big one being the budget. After the blue sky phase, Imagineers take the best ideas from the batch and bring them together to develop a land that is both realistic in terms of cost and space. That's where we are when these concepts were created. It became clear that the major lagoon and mysterious island weren't feasible, at least in that scale. Something else that had the people in charge of the project worried about was the Parisian weather. How can they create a place that will be comfortable to visit both in the summer and in the winter. This came in the form of Discovery Mountain. Tim Delaney's idea then was a part of Discovery Land to be outside with a cafe at the entrance of the land, the Circle Vision film Le Visionarium, also known as a Timekeeper, the very big Videopolis theater and restaurant that were picked from the Blue Sky phase, and in the back, Star Tours and the Cinemagique Theater, now known as the Discovery Land Theater. Then, a massive structure would be found in the middle of the land that would not only shelter visitors from the elements, but also offer a spectacular array of attractions and experiences. There were many versions of what this mountain would look like and what it would house. The outside went from a more natural mountain turned sci-fi to a more half-steampunk, half-natural rock formation but eventually it was decided that it should be a completely steampunk metal structure. The huge dome would sit in one side of Discovery Land and cover the entire central area of the land. It would have a diameter of around 100 meters compared to the 62 of the Space Mountain we all know today. Videopolis would be connected to this huge structure via an air bridge. In fact, to this day, you can still walk between Space Mountain and the Videopolis building and see the traces of this long scaled down project, as two openings were installed that would serve as the entrance and exit to and from the theater. Inside, things would be even more impressive though. As I said, there were many different Discovery Mountains proposed. 
So let's go over some of them and see what could have been found enclosed in the dome. The first of three versions we'll be going over would feature an adaptation of Horizons, a now defunct Epcot dark ride that showcased the future of communication, energy, transportation, anatomy, and many other elements that were key to Epcot. This version would also use a concept from the old Blue Sky Discovery Land, which was the Skyway. While they wouldn't transport people from this land to Fantasyland as originally proposed, guests could still hover above the Discovery Mountain. The biggest attraction here, though, would be this roller coaster that would shoot guests upwards, climbing to the top of the mountain and going back down. Here, a lagoon would house an underwater dining experience with the help of Captain Nemo as you'd be having lunch or dinner inside the Nautilus after exploring the famous submarine. The second version of Discovery Mountain would be a little more interesting as the dome would be home to two levels. On the ground floor, guests would find direct entrances to Star Tours and the Horizons attractions at the back of the pavilion and exploring and dining in the Nautilus would also be possible here. In the place of the coaster would be a small fall tower inspired by Jules Verne's journey to the center of the Earth as guests fall into the ground in an excavator-themed ride vehicle. This would be the focus point inside the dome, but the most important part of it all would be found above everyone's heads. The second floor of the show building would house a fast and thrilling roller coaster inspired by the novel From the Earth to the Moon. Guests would board the trains, and these would move to outside the mountain. Here, they are locked inside a cannon that closes behind them and shoots them up into the sky just before falling into the mountain and racing through incredibly elaborate themed sets, including the surface of the moon with many steampunk machinery. One of the great parts of this attraction is that everyone would be able to explore and walk around many of these sets and see the trains race by them. While most of the roller coaster would be held in the top floor, the trains would sometimes come down and say hello to the guests downstairs. This roller coaster also went through many stages and versions, but it ended up looking very similar to Space Mountain from the Earth to the Moon, as it would take place mostly in space with stars surrounding the tracks. A lot of the attractiveness of Discovery Mountain came from its intricate theming and amazing kinetic energy. You could be having a hot chocolate inside a dome overlooking the Nautilus when an excavator drops by your side and a blazing fast bullet-themed train races behind you. As Euro Disneyland was getting closer and closer to the April 12, 1992 opening date, Imagineers and managers saw that the budget wouldn't be enough for everything they wanted to build in the park, and so Discovery Mountain would be postponed for a phase two. In order to not only bring new and exciting attractions to the park in the years after opening, but also to keep the costs lower and recuperate some of the money they had invested. As you know by now, Euro Disneyland didn't open with the fanfare Disney was hoping, and with the French housing market crashing, they weren't able to make as much money from selling land as projected. The years after opening saw the creation of many small and sometimes supposedly temporary attractions to increase the park capacity, but management's eyes were set in one expansion, something that would change the park's trajectory. Disney was so sure that Discovery Mountain was going to be built soon that the opening day fun map included it alongside the future attraction label, and to a certain point, they weren't lying. Tim Delaney was tasked to bringing Discovery Mountain to life, but with an extremely reduced budget. This truly wasn't an easy task. How can you build something of this scale with a much smaller budget than what you originally planned? The answer was compromise. This sketch was an early drawing of what the new Discovery Mountain would look like. Now, a much smaller dome with a 62 meter diameter compared to the original 100. The Nautilus, now without the dining part of the experience and just a very well themed walkthrough attraction, would be placed outside the show building alongside a small lagoon. Inside Discovery Mountain would be two different attractions 
the very similar roller coaster proposed for the bigger dome, and a platform that would allow guests to explore the inside of the mountain without having to ride. This was called the Cellar Way, and was something that also came from the older proposal. Unfortunately, while the Imagineers were given the go to imagine, the engineering side of their job was cut short due to budgets and lack of profits. The number of rides went from a total of three to just one. But looking on the bright side, Disneyland Paris got three new attractions, so it could have been a lot worse, and the very big expansion plot in the middle of Discoveryland could still be there. The attraction marked a very big turning point in the history of the Disneyland Paris Resort. It was in 1995 that it opened, and it was in 1995 that the resort reported its first profits. The name remained Discovery Mountain for a lot longer than some realize. Up until just months before opening, it was decided that this name must go. And so the change happened. The entrance marquee was built and ready to go, and so were many of the railings with the initials DM that can still be seen to this day. The new name, Space Mountain from the Earth to the Moon. So, which part of the Discovery Mountain proposal sounded the most intriguing to you? Let me know them below. And now, as always, thank you for watching, and that's a wrap.